Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, you're going to see my hands because I am not projecting from ultra short throw projector that I got. This is ViewSonic and the model is, the box is below, PA503W. And I got the specs of this projector right here because it's blocking the normal projector angle. And right now the projector is connected to 4K Re uh, Realme dongle that I got. And do I recommend it? If you can buy a Google dongle, uh, there is no license issue. Realme 4K dongle is one of the cheap, good 4K ones. And I'm going to start play the 4K footage inside. Right now the video is coming 4K. The signal is full HD coming this projector. And you are seeing the picture quality. And sorry about the wrong remote control. Let me just find the ViewSonics controller. Yep. It's there. I'm sorry, it's difficult to find a couple of remotes. And right now it's in the super echo mode. This is dynamic mode and this is the normal mode. Dynamic, I guess, is one of the best. So right now, let's start with the specs. This video is about budget projector. I purchased it about 230 to 250 depending on the time that I purchased. I need to check the currency but it's about 200 250 dollar range 720p projector it's not actually 720p little above so we're going to talk about it this is wxja in my early video how i explained how you can find the best projector for the lowest price i was talking about something between the known resolutions like full hd and full hd plus or let's just say 2k or something between the 4K and Full HD. There are resolutions between the 1024 to 768 PC resolution, 4x3 is, you know, could be livable. So I've explained in a whole nother tutorial. So that was the whole tutorial that you learn how you can find bargains. This is a bargain projector review. So getting back to the topic, this is the ViewSonic PA503W. You're going to see the specs in the screen while I talk about it. In the declaration, 22,000 to 1, the contrast ratio, super color technology, five color modes, and I'm going to show you those modes. This, uh, it has only vertical keystone, no four-point four keystone, but the vertical is most of the time enough when you're ceiling mounted or putting on a table like this. The picture I think is good enough and you if you have watched my video the cheap LED versus cheap bulb secondhand video the projector was this so this is probably 10 times brighter from the cheap single LED 720p or full HD declaration projectors out there so we are going to have to go back again no, not the Netflix, sorry. I'm going to open up the YouTube again to continue that 4K video. And I'm going to talk about pluses and minuses of this projector. So on the declaration on the paper, everything looks good for this projector. Because it says 15,000 hours of lamp life uh, in the super echo mode, of course. But in the echo mode, uh, still you got around probably 10,000 hours of life. So this is a long life projector. It's just like probably very close to single LED projectors that you can find around 150 to $200 range. And they're only giving 400 ancillum and most of the time power. When you're thinking about this, if you're not too curious about the bulb changing processes, I have all that covered in the separate videos that I got in the channel. So we got auto power off, bright images, uh, any environment. It says 3,800 NC lumens. And by looking at the image, I don't think so. Because I have 3,600 NC lumen Epson and it gives probably brighter pictures. But the main issue is probably the optical element 
has a lower F value and I, ex I explained that topic in another video. You're going to have to watch a couple of other tutorials if you want to understand. But this is a bargain projector still. Even though it looks like negative, it's actually positive. I purchased it just for you guys. I don't need a 720p cheap projector in my collection. I have 4Ks, I have Full HD Ultra Short Pros, I have sponsor projectors. But I also want to create a bargain level of product videos for you because these are achievable, um, you know, reachable for a lot of people with low budget. So getting back to the topic, it says amazing color accurate with super color, super color settings and fine-tuned viewing it says like uh, presentation and the normal settings because it says brightest presentation standard photo mode and movie mode we're going to take a look at all these modes and immersive 3d i don't care about the 3d and 3d blu-ray i guess nobody does really these days so we got remote control functions we got a lot of buttons on the remote control and this is one of the things that i love about the bull projector still they give you more detailed uh, remote controls considering the laser or led ones because this is the epson remote it doesn't have many buttons as this but it will get the job done epson is way better projector and of course the epson is 10 times expensive than this one but still we don't have the same amount of buttons and i guess that's about it so the spec wise the projection system is 0 0.65 which i explained in another tutorial about how much the sensor size this device considering the small led single led or single laser small cheap products out there has way bigger sensor 0 0.65 inch will give you good picture quality even though this is about 720p ish style projector because it is 1280 to 800 it's little bit above like i told you this is a bargain projector and the resolution is not 720p but little bit above and 22000 to 1 contrast is the one of the things that i loved about this projector right now what we are projecting is this is a 92 inch alr screen but it's for ultra short throw so the projector has to be a little lower but i need to get it onto the same picture with me so the brightness is getting little low because of the screen angle it needs to be lower for the perfect most bright image but still it will get the job done we got 1.07 billion colors and we have a lamp of course for the light source and normal mode it has 5000 hours of lamp life again super echo mode 15000 which is the most important part for me to choose this projector for you guys. And I might be able to keep this in the future, but I might change it with other projectors because I want to continue the budget projector series where you will find a cheap product with a good quality. So the second thing that concerns me about the lens when I talk about the brightness, it's I'm not thinking this is called 3800 lumens, but the f value of our lens is 2.56 when you zoom 2.68 my optoma uhd 35 had i guess one point uh, sorry 2.02 or 1.98 so it was about less than two and a little bit above two so this is dimming the life like Light, light like 25 to 40 percent depending on where you look at things how you calculate things i'm talking about general here so don't get too technical in these videos i'm trying to explain for everybody so light is maybe powerful from behind the lens but when you put it through this sort of like 2.6 lens light get lost along the way after the lens and optical element optical zoom we got 1.1 for this price range for this setup it's nothing to be ashamed of digital zoom we got 0.8 to 2x that's good if you want to digitally zoom into stuff we're going to look at the details of the menu and the image size is from 30 inch to 300 
that's what matters for me so if you want to use it in a small room create a 65 inch tv style image you're going to get a very bright image this is a lit environment and it's projecting on a dark alr screen and as you can see everything is perfectly clear and watchable just like a tv in a lit environment so this is a powerful projector way powerful than single led entry-level projectors you can go back and watch that video how this thing humiliates uh, entry-level cheap uh, LED single light projector. I will review that. That's the cheapest projector, one of the cheapest ones that you can find. But sharpness and quality is way better than full HD single LED cheap products out there. That's why I am recommending these sort of setups. So we got input lag, input lag of 16 milliseconds. So you can casually play console games. You can connect your console to this, like Xbox Series X that I got, or PlayStation 5, 4. Or Xbox Series S or Xbox One in that matter so you can use your projector as a smart device so the last thing is connections behind this device we got how many connections we got we got composite HDMI 1.4 audio in 3.5 millimeter jack monitor out VGA uh, monitor in VGA sorry audio input and output from 3.5 so you can get the audio out from this device it's coming from HDMI you can take it out from like an analog cable and we got two watts of speakers and when I hit the full specs what do I have left RS 232 uh, mail socket you're not going to be probably using it a home setup and USB type mini type B series 2.2 kilos the gross weight is a little more of course and the size is not extreme uh, less than 30 centimeters of width and 21.8 centimeters of depth and 11 centimeters of height this is a compact bulk projector when you're talking about the size so my conclusion then my conclusion is before diving deep into the settings and calculating the brightness level of this projector with my ANSI Lumen calculations as always. It's bright enough, affordable enough, picture quality is way better than many LED, single LED projectors because of the 0.65 inch sensor. This might be one of the ideal ones. What is lacking is obvious. It is lacking the USB port. Right now I'm giving the visual from 4K dongle. But the problem is I am also using a USB power adapter to give power to that Android dongle. So if you're going to use a console, gaming console like Xbox One, I recommend Xbox One X because it's 4K. So you can play 4K YouTube videos inside of this thing and you can have also a cheap console and 4K game capable console. All those support is going low. You can really use that 4K console, play games, enjoy the movies from that same console from HDMI and it has its own power source. But the main issue is if you're going to use uh, Android dongles or Android box, you have to use a power adapter with this device. And it has only one HDMI. That's one of the downsides of this device. You have to use some sort of a small extension and also HDMI splitter. I got HDMI 8K and 4K splitters and I showed you in the channel. I switched from Xbox, from a dongle and many devices. If you're going to use this sort of stuff, it's easy to buy a full HD switch because uh, I'm using 4K because I have 4K devices and projectors laying around. I want to switch. I don't want to, you know, use back and forth too much of HDMI cables. I don't want to kill the HDMI socket of these things because when you do it the repair is expensive and it's going to take your time and also money so for that I recommend an extension cable and HDMI uh, splitter so where do we left you can go a little higher on the price and get a two HDMI socket and you can get a USB power output from different uh, models and I will hopefully after selling this I will pay a little bit more increase the quality but around 200 250 dollar range 
you won't be regretting your choice if it's a brand good uh, cared product this is like a brand new product let me just show you i got the full original box from the previous owner okay so this is on un near untouched product let me just give you an example the original protectors are inside original bags are inside and the power cable to us mount is inside of an original package it's never open because i'm living in europe in turkey so you are going to like this projector there is a little bit of fan noise because this is a compact device not a huge case so there is not like a eight or nine centimeter fan this is kind of like a turbo fan but when you do it the echo mode right now it's in the dynamic super echo mode let's wait a while sound goes half the way i'm not going to measure the sound level of this projector because we know the bulb ones are getting you know hot when you push to dynamic and you're going to hear the fan noise but if you you know connect a bluetooth dongle or headphones anything at all you're not going to be hearing this thing but if you're going to place it above your head in the dynamic mode and the bright or normal modes you're going to hear the fan noise and it's not going to be lovely all i can say that but the image quality from echo as you can see super echo to dynamic and normal is way different and it's way more than enough so let's go to the menu then first thing is first i need to change the language for you probably let's find the language yes from turkish i need to go english and right now the menu is english so let's hit the menu and start with information right now we got hdmi and the resolution is full hd 60 hertz and you uh yuv is our color system we got firmware version 2 and etc so after the information we got displays displays aspect ratio is auto it's ideal 4.4 to 3 to uh, 16 to 10 and also we got panorama 2.35 to 1 is one of the best panoramic angles of course let me just go down a little bit my knees are hurting and we got anamorphic i think this is cool if you want to experience this but many of the people probably won't be having this sort of screen if they're projecting but if you're projecting on a wall 2.35 to 1 would be a good anamorphic radio so i'm going to keep it in the auto mode and get back again the menu the keystone we got up and down like i told you vertical keystone this is one of the downsides this thing cannot be doing uh, four corner keystones or side keystones uh, you have to stick up with only vertical keystone that's might be an issue if you have to project from angle but you know by now i made dedicated videos you have to project straight otherwise you're going to have uh, problems on the sharpness some sort of edge around the screen even if you focus in the middle i explained it in an entire tutorial so i'm not going to get dive deep and the overscan and let's go to the image we got color mods of right now standard let's go brightest this is the brightest image and the whites are kind of like gone and the colors are turning a little bit of uh, yellowish or greenish this is one of the issues like if you go cheaper projectors and on the brightest mode even in the epson with uh, 10 times of more expensive projector color shifts when you go to the brightest settings the ideal idea behind it is they give you brightest uh, settings but not the best picture so presentation is far more brighter by the way the brighter menu and the presentation is quite bright and if you need extra power which probably i guess you don't you are seeing the image this is a great image considering the price and the standard is good photo is a little soft and the movie is even softer like many of the cinema mode so i'm going to keep it in the standard mode in the rest of the video so go back we got brightness contrast we are in the middle if i increase it 
probably we are going to lose. Let's just increase it into the full. Of course, image quality, contrast increase, but middle is always better in my opinion. Color temperature, we got everything we need, but can we change it? When we go from normal to cool, cool to warm, again, we can adjust it if we need it. So advanced mode, gamma and brilliant color. Brilliant, brilliant color is in the 10. If I close it and open it, difference is huge, in my opinion. But it's up to you, like there is a softness and the taste in it. So the gamma is C6, you can change the gamma settings. G1 is bright. If you're into that sort of stuff, like the HDR kind of like effect, it happens. But it was in the C6, I guess it's a good manageable point. It's up to you. So other than the image settings, what do we have? Like auto power on, that's a good stuff. Smart energy, we got 20 minutes or we can adjust it like 10 minutes. Auto power off if you're going to sleep over with your projector. Sleep timer, that's a good stuff. And power saving, those are good stuff. Standby settings, again, active VGA, active audio out. Smart restart, disable right now. The quick power off, that's a good stuff. Audio settings, what do we have? Mute, audio volume, power on off, regular stuff. Presentation timer, that's good. Uh, pattern, right now is off, test card. Yeah, we got a good focus task, that, that, that's good stuff. Like notepad, world map, stave, yeah, Terrorless chart. This is, Terrorless chart is also good for you to realize how much distortions that you have on screen. But I'm going to go back and off. That's probably better for you and me. And we got blank timer, message, sp splash screen of ViewSonic, and it's off. Advanced, we got 3D settings, 3D sync, frame sequential, top to bottom, side by side, and off. I'm going to keep it at off. HDMI settings, what do we have? HDMI format, format is auto, RGB, UIV, and auto. Auto is good for me. HDMI range, enhanced. Enhanced is like a little bit of HDR. It just pops out the blacks, make them lighter. You might want to use this enhanced setting for gaming if you like. It's up to you. Sometimes on the dark games like, uh, you know, zombie style games maybe. When you're walking in the dark or FPS, you want to see the enemies. You might want to try that. Lamp settings. Dynamic reset lamp hours. Lamp hours is right now 2. Probably previous owner reset it. But he said... The device been used like two times. It might be the real hour of this thing because I haven't used it until this video. I don't need it. Like I told you, I purchase stuff sometimes just to show you bargain, how bargain you can catch. So subscribe and like the videos if you can because this really helps the channel to grow. And, and I'm spending time, effort, both shooting, editing and buying stuff for you guys. So have some support please projector positioning is front table we all know that like front table rear table rear ceiling and front ceiling these are the stuff that you put up down and reverse back projecting and stuff the menu settings menu display time and menu position it doesn't matter for me high altitude mode is right now on we are not in the high altitude mode so i'm going to close it Yes, and fan noise is going a little bit down. Ah, that's good. I don't know why the previous owner did this, but the fan noise is way down. It shouldn't be open if you're not living in the high altitude where the oxygen level is low. Because high altitude probably will be colder than the rest of where regular people live. And if you have a climate control room, you don't need this stuff. So that's a plus. Sound is going very low. In the echo mode, you wouldn't be probably hearing this. The quick auto search, security settings, what do we have? Change password, power lock on, 
panel key lock, remote control code, and baud rate. And other than that, we are back to info. I guess I've explained nearly everything. Let me just go up a little bit for you guys. And I'm going to increase the room light to show you something. This is right now ambient light is full from my Philips Hue setup, but let me just check for you. I'm going to open up the rest of the lights. I know this is not the perfect setup for this sort of projector, but I think the image is still good with the ultra short row LR screen. Right now, the, this is 45 degree angle searching ultra short row screen, but the overall result in a lit environment with a $200 to $250 projector, I guess this gets the job done way better than the cheap LED, single LED projectors. One last thing, some people are considering the mercury is a danger. It's not going to blow up on your face and if you don't hit the projector lamp, don't be worrying about this. Any kind of material could have problem, but the issue is you are not probably going on that level of danger in probably 99%. Other than that, people are talking about in 2026, that will be a whole another video, but I just want to get into that topic quite fast. Everybody talked about cars are going to be electric and diesel is not going to be sold in Europe, especially in Germany. There are a lot of cars like Audis, BMWs and stuff. And the car, as a car guy, I love those cars. But the main issue is they don't stop because of the crisis. So the world is changing. You have to understand when they say things, they are going to be, you know, focused on the LED lasers and they are going to get rid of the mercury projectors. They will have bulbs around probably five or ten years because people have invested already to expensive stuff like big 4k hdr cinema projectors ultra short throw long throw ultra long throw or short throw projectors and they use lamps but if you want to get secure you know security in the future you can purchase a couple of lamps they are 10 to 15 dollars for this sort of projectors up top $20 for 10 to 15 thousands of hours of lamp life. These things are durable than your TVs, believe me. And for the picture quality from a 4K video from YouTube, I guess you're going to give plus to this projector. Maybe you wanna, you might wanna see this in the beginning of the video but in the end at least you are witnessing in a lit environment how a cheap projector can succeed but let me just remind you this is around one thousand dollar worth of projector screen and probably if you are going to use a cheap projector like this you're not going to invest on the screen this amount of money but think about it again if you have one thousand four hundred dollar only for one product like a ultra short throw or long throw projector you're going to get a good projector i can tell you that we all know that but if you invest a lot of in advance to a screen you can even get away with 200 dollars screen and even if you have paid like four thousand dollars if you're going to open up the lights Without ALR, you're not going to see this image. So, when you're thinking about ALR screen investment, this will make your projector just like a TV. But no projector can stand alone by itself, look like as a TV without an ALR. So, keep that in mind. I already made a dedicated video, cheap projector with expensive screen video. I've used Epson LS. Uh, Epson TW650. It was giving a good results. One last thing at the end of the video. This device doesn't have the perfect throw ratio. Right now the distance between screen and the projector is far more than TW650 Epson. 
probably you can't find the Epson with this price. Epson is still expensive, but the screen size is about 80 inches. This, this is small. So throw, check it, look out for the throw ratio. But this projector can focus 300 inches and also create 30 inches. That's also a plus. Hope to see in the next video. Home Cinema and Tech Review. I will be leaving you with the tests and then the video is finished. In this section of the video, you are seeing the entire uh, room, at least rest of the projector. I have to push the projector on the seat where I sit actually. So this is a little difficult to use in my setup. The throw ratio is longer than uh, my preferred ratio for home use, like Epson TW650 was around probably $350 in the second hand market, maybe $400 depending on where you buy, but the practicality is like a, just a golf car, like VW Golf, because it delivers like general usability. But you're right now watching 92 inch image from 720p projector and the image is quite sharp. And I'm going to close the room lights so you can really understand. This is a casual light where you can see me, right? This is a good light uh, setup. Right now the room is where you're looking at the image to screen and me, I can read books. The lights are there around the corner. And if you haven't checked the room setup, you can watch my other videos. But basically, this is a good image. This is dynamic up top brightness of this projector. I'm not saying this is an Epson LS300 level projector. You're going to witness, again, I'm going to measure the brightness level of this projector and let me just show you one other example before we dive into the test i will dim the room lights to 50 percent and this is the contrast that you're going to get in a dimly lit environment where you can casually sit see where you are where you're you know you can even read text like small texts on the books you can read it where you are standing and i'm going to do 25 percent. this is the 25 percent of room light i can still see around a lot more than you see in the camera i can see the furniture i can see the details and where i sit i can really eat my snacks if i want to so this is fully closed right now this is a dark room setup and we have a quite a bit of good black and contrast combination uh, and also the brightness and I'm not right now pushing this projector into the brightest settings like presentation and stuff This is the normal version and you don't want to probably go above So in the rest of the video the last part I'm going to give you the brightness test results, but for that I'm going to uh, Test it in the normal mode. I'm not going to use the presentation mode because the reality we're going to be using this in a probably uh, a lit uh, normal uh, best condition for the colors normal mode, uh, mode will be ideal so we're going to go measure in a dark room and get back to you in this section of the video i want to explain how do i measure again the brightness of the projectors i basically measure every time i talk about it i made a dedicated video again I got a measurement tool. I measure nine different sections of the screen. I calculate the total lux levels and then divide it by nine and multiply it with the screen size as a square meters. So what we have end up with 2136.75. So we can call it like 2200 ish and silumen brightness. On the declaration, the product says 3,800. I don't exactly know if this was a brand new, this might be a better and brighter projector because the previous owner res might be reset at the battery uh, bulb life. So my tests are about this projector. If you're going to tell that I'm telling wrong, I might be wrong. But the basic issue is you're going to buy a second hand projector and without changing the bulb and I haven't because the product looks pretty new and like unused. 
So the previous owner said a couple of weeks and I have to accept that. Otherwise, there is no way to understand the bulb life. But basically, the picture quality and brightness will give you enough ideas. And still, this is a quite good projector for the money. But you're going to be looking for single HDMI problem. It's kind of like a problem. And don't have the USB power for dongles. And that might be an issue if you're just going to watch digital content like me. And that's a thing. You need to add some sort of a 10 to $15 full HD or 4K splitter to use it. Uh, or HDMI switch, sorry. HDMI switch to use from one device to another if you have a couple of devices. You're going to have to connect something smart to it. It doesn't have the smart. It has the two watts of speakers. For me, most of the time, I don't care about too much of speakers because you can easily buy a Bluetooth speaker and many of the cinema enthusiasts tend to use sound bars or Bluetooth speakers. I review these Anchor Sound Cores and these are like 60 watt each, I guess, or 80 watt. So probably total, if I remember correctly, these are 100 and uh, 60 watt 80 watt from each one so it will rock the room a lot of places this is a boombox style bluetooth portable speakers you can watch the review uh, one connects to another and becomes like stereo left to right so you can use a couple of them you don't have to go this route that much of an expensive like you can really buy stuff for 40 dollar to 60 dollar like 40 watt to 60 watt RMS and it's basically very close to a point of LG's high-end OLED TVs speakers and for the base they might be even better so it's up to you but I guess this is a budget good projector let me know what you think at the comment section below if you own this projector and if you made the measurement you can tell us how bright it is as brand new for me it's far more than enough for the money that I paid, it's earned its place. And right now I'm projecting HDR video, but I can project uh, brighter images. Let's go Los Angeles or Bermuda, like a brighter scenes before ending up the video. You can clearly say this is easily watchable video, especially in a casual room light setup like this. What more do you want for $200-ish projector? So let me know what you think. Please don't forget to hit thumbs up and subscribe. I'm shooting this video at late at night at 2 o'clock before Ramadan. And uh, because I'm not going to shoot any new videos, you're going to be watching the videos that I shot early uh, for a one month. It will be from the stock videos that I've created for you. But it's taking a lot of time and effort to buy a, some First, find something really usable on a low budget with a decent or good quality. Second, to test it, give it some time and then publish the video and create the rest of the content. Takes a lot of effort. Again, subscribe, like, enjoy. And if you learn anything, just share the videos as much as possible. Hope to see you in the next video, Home Cinema and Tech Review.